Hey everyone, this is Nick from Cats Mile Customs here in upstate New York. Now, if you follow my work, you know I make a lot of motorcycle tanks. One of the biggest problems, though, with making custom tanks is ensuring that they fit on your bike when you get them. Now, if you live in the area, you can bring me your bike. That's easy. Or you could ship me your bike. Or maybe you could ship me your frame if you're doing a ground level build. Those are all great options because I can work right on your bike and make sure all the dimensions, everything's going to fit like it should. However, in the real world, that doesn't always work out. So the next best thing that you can do is make some paper patterns at home that you can send me in the mail to ensure that the tank comes out to the design you're looking for and more importantly, fits with all the components that you're running on your bike. So they're easy to make, don't take long at all, and I'm going to show you how to get that done. I've got this cool little Honda S90 here I'm working on for a customer making an aluminum tank and pail. Uh, it's a great example to make patterns off of because it's got this funky stamp steel frame. Uh, this process will work with any style frame you have, whether it's a simple down tube or something more intricate. I work with white poster board to make these style profiles. It's a little bit stiffer than uh, construction paper. It's not cardboard, so it'll cut real clean. You can make nice lines. Um, you don't want the cardboard from an Amazon box. It's going to be a mess. It doesn't cut nice. It's hard to work with. Recycle that stuff. Get some poster board. To start, I pull a measurement and I cut a rectangle just a little bit bigger than I need generally. And I like to use these little magnets, masking tape works, whatever, and I stick it on the bike. The very first thing you want to do is make some reference marks on your frame and on your pattern to make sure that every time you take the pattern off, you put it back on in the same spot every time. Okay? Because you don't want to draw one line, then you put it back on, and it's in a little different spot, you make the next line, you cut it, next thing you know, your tank is in the shape you're looking for. So make sure the pattern goes back on the same spot every time. From there, I'll have my rectangle on the bike, and I'll start sketching out the profile of the tank. That's what this pattern shows, the overall side view profile. So if you just stand back, eye level, kind of like the camera's oriented now, this is the shape of the tank, all right, that you'll see. So I'll start loosely just sketching it, step back with the pencil, usually throw away my first one, start over again, sketching until I get the proportions right, get the things I want. Um, I'll have my rough pencil marks, but then I can bring it over to the bench, grab my rulers, grab whatever I need to make the radius, maybe it's a roll of masking tape, whatever, and I'll draw some nice crisp lines, I'll cut them out, bring it back to the bike, see if it's looking good. If you had it 99% there, but you have to change something, tape a piece of poster board on, draw it. When you get that profile good, you have tape all over, it's a mess, doesn't matter, put it on a fresh piece, trace it, cut it out, you have a nice clean slate to work with. Once you have the overall profile done, check, make sure your handlebars aren't going to hit it, make sure your triple clamp's not going to hit. Um, from there, we'll make some notes. One is this front steering neck, where is that? So I would just draw a line, mark it, that's looking from the side, that's where the steering neck clearance needs to be. Because um, I'm going to cut that on the top. A lot of tanks like this one extend past the steering neck, but I need to know where that's located looking from the side so I can make proper clearance. Um, on this bike, we look back here, this is the height of the tank mount, so line tank mount. You don't have to be an artist, but try to be neat, make notes clear so I can read them. Uh, this tank has a body line that's going to be in it, so that's this black line here. I know what that line is, but if you do it at home, mark it clearly. Also, important thing to note is go on the back side of this pattern. Um, I'll actually move this one. Let's see. Let's make pretend that's where it sits. Grab your pencil and mark the top of your frame, because I need to know how deep to make your tunnel. Um, we want this thing to hold as much fuel as possible, so, you know, maybe the tank sits up high, maybe it sits down low. So, mark how deep I need to make your tunnel inside the side profile. Okay? So, now you have that good, that's looking where you want it. I'm going to move the camera and show you how we start marking out the dimension of this tank. Okay, now we're going to start working on laying out the dimensions and profile of this tank if we're looking at it from above, looking down the tank. So you're sitting in your riding position, you look down on it, this is what we're going to see. Now, again, I use white poster board. We're going to sketch out this profile. What I like to do is make this profile at 
the widest part of the tank. You know, the tank is bulbous. We need the profile at the widest point. There's no use making a profile for just one of the narrow points because that's not going to show the full dimension of your bike. You're going to see the outside of the widest portion, okay? Now, the only part where that gets tricky is you have to remember, it corresponds with your side profile. So on this tank, I decided that I need the profile at the body line, okay? That's pretty much where this tank's going to be the widest. So I start with a rectangle, cut to the length of the profile of the tank in that spot. Hope you can see that. Okay, so I'll start off the rectangle um, a little bit wider than I need, so I have room to work, but that length is important. The length needs to correspond with the profile. I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick that up, but you can see what I'm getting at right there. Okay, so I'll put my rectangle, once I got the right length, I'll put it on the bike, where the orientation would be in relation to that side profile. Remember, where's that side profile, what the length is, how that's gonna look on the bike. It's not that tricky, think about it a little bit, you can figure it out, okay? Then the same thing, I'll start sketching the side profile. As long as it's in the confines of that width, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You want this tank to be big, wide at the front, and taper hard towards the back. Do you want it to be like this one, where it's a little round and mellow and slight taper? The back is squared off. This is also going to show what the rear of the tank looks like. This one has a rear, a real squared off rear. But that's what kind of things I need to say. It's what do you want the rear end of the tank to look like? So I start, as you can see, working on just this one side at a time. I find if you make try to do both sides, it might be helpful for you dimensionally, but you can't get it symmetrical easy that way. So I do one side. Then if I want to check it, I'll trace this, flip it over on the other side, then I have both sides. But this pro profile should mark the center line of the backbone, be the correct length to correspond with your side profile, and show the widest point of the tank. And same process, sketch it out, cut it out, get the shape you're looking for. Now I know what this tank is gonna look like when I'm looking down from the top. Again, check your clearance at the widest part. You might find that from the profile, it looks like a clear spine, but when you make this big wide front tank, it might hit the fork or whatever. So this is where you can, again, check your clearance. Okay, the last panel that we need is for the tunnel. The section of the tank that's gonna go over top of your backbone to make sure it fits and we can clear it and we can mark where all your mounts are and everything. So I have a tunnel pattern right here. This isn't exactly for this bike. I didn't make one for this bike yet, but this is one from a previous bike and it's similar. So, when it's done, it's going to look like this, okay? And that represents the metal on the inside of your tank. The way I start is with the center line, and I measure the front of the backbone and the rear of the backbone, and I add extra space. You need space to add your mounts and everything else. So you're gonna need at least a half inch more on each side. I'd probably go three quarter inch um, on each side at least, depending on your mounts. If you have, this bike has these, you know, hockey puck style mounts, we need enough space to put, you know, brackets in there to clip onto those, okay? So add the extra space in the front and the rear, and then draw the lines. And those are gonna represent the bend marks for your tunnel, okay? Now these sides are gonna correspond with your side profile. So what I do is I have these lines here and I leave big rectangles just like before. I'll bend it, I'll put it on the bike, just like this. Boom. And then I'll grab my side profile, put it on in the proper orientation. Remember before, when we made this profile, we put that line on it that represents where the backbone is, right? So where that backbone line is, is gonna be where the top of the tunnel is. So you line that up and just simply trace the profile, okay? Take it off, cut it out, and then your tunnel corresponds with your side profile, and everything lines up like it should, and that shows me how deep I need to make your tunnel. Now, I'm probably gonna make it a little bit deeper and a little bit wider than you sent me, just to make sure it fits, okay? So once we have that all set to fit, the profile is correct, that's when you take your pencil and you can mark where your mounts are. Where's your front mount? Where's your rear mount? 
you know, is there anything weird in here? You know, you have a carburetor or something that needs to clear. So we put a cutout in there and, you know, you can mark bump out for carburetor, etc. Okay? But real simple. Um, just take your time. No problem. Okay, let's bring these over to the table and I'll show you what I do with these patterns to make your tank. You've got your patterns made. One thing I forgot to mention is on your side profile, make sure you mark where the other profiles correspond. Like I said, mine goes along with this body line, so I know right where to put it. Reason being is the last part of your tank could be in the middle, it could be up high or wherever. So I need to know where that profile goes. Also, is you can make multiple profiles. Let's say the top of your tank has a real low crown area, and you want to show me what the shape of that looks like. You can make a profile that goes there. That would also give you a better idea at home what that tank is going to look like, what its shape is going to be, how it's going to curve, okay? So once you get all your profiles made, you can fold them up, stick them in a mailer, and send them over to me. Please reach out to me first. I have a wait list. If patterns just show up in the mail, it would be a nightmare. So once I get your profiles, I start and I make a buck for your tank. Now there's multiple types of bucks. The one I made for this happens to be a wood buck. So if you can see, if I line this up correctly with the camera, that side profile corresponds with the shape of the wooden buck. And this top profile fits in right about there. So you can see I use these to lay out the buck and get the shape that we need for the tank. Once I have the buck made, I pull my patterns, I start shaping metal, and this tank is in progress. And you can see it right there. Okay. Match up the original patterns. side profile. Now I don't know if you can see it, but there's the body line. It's hard to pick up on the camera. Another style of buck I more often make is a wire form buck. Um, I like these much better than wood bucks. I don't even know why I made that one out of wood. Uh, this is an old wire form buck I made. I don't have the profile anymore, but I found what I believe to be one of the side profiles right there. Okay, and this one shows, this one has a knee indent. So this shows me how that knee indent should be. And then I take this, I make my patterns, and this wire form turns into whoop, this tank. Also, with the tunnel pattern we made, this is the exact one. Gives you an idea of how that works. There it is. Okay. So, with the notes you make on this tunnel pattern, I'll know where to put brackets for any tank mounts you need, whether front, rear, and you get a tank that fits your bike in the mail. Also, if it's tricky, you have some tight fitment, I can make this wire form, put it in a box. Send it over to you. You can test fit it on your bike, make sure the dimensions are correct, and then send it back to me. Um, I can make changes to these real easily. Um, it's a little extra time, you know, you got, we have to ship it back and forth, but it's worth it to get it right the first time. Um, we could do things, modify a tank when it's done. If I send it to you and it doesn't fit right, we gotta change something, I can do that, but obviously it's better to avoid that. Thanks for checking out the video. If you're interested in having a tank made for your bike, visit my website, catskillmtncustoms.com. Fill out the contact form, and it's the best way to get in touch with me. Also, check out my Instagram, which is catskillmtncustoms, and check out my YouTube channel. I have a video series showing exactly how I made this tank from scratch, giving you an idea of how the process works. Again, thanks for watching.